The Pride History Group, Inner City Legal Centre, the New South Wales Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby and ACON met at New South Wales Parliament House for the 30th anniversary of the decriminalisation of homosexuality in New South Wales and also to mark the recent passage of a bill finally ending the gay panic defence. It seems strange now to people from a later generation but 30 years ago in this country one man could go to, to jail for having sex with another man and that was an appalling situation and it had to be changed. Also on this day, friends gathered to acknowledge gay rights campaigner, activist and historian Lex Watson. Lex had been campaigning for LGBTI issues since 1968. He was a foundation member of the Campaign Against Moral Persecution, CAM, and in 1980 Watson founded the Gay Rights Lobby, which would later become the New South Wales Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby. From the change of the law in England in 1967, there'd been several attempts to actually form a group or to actually concentrate on law reform, but it was only with the, the formation of Gay Rights Lobby in 1980 that the, real, the final push to actually law reform took place. As a member of a delegation, Lex lobbied the then Premier Neville Rann on gay rights issues, which led to the decriminalisation of homosexuality in New South Wales in 1984. He was instrumental in dealing with the AIDS epidemic in the 80s and was the first president of the AIDS Council of New South Wales. At a meeting in Neville Rand's office in 1976, just after he'd become Premier, he told the delegation from Camp New South Wales that he wasn't going to move on law reform. He liked his job too much, he said, and that's a quote. And that it was up to the gay community to make it an issue. And that is just what we did. Lex was president of the Pride History Group at the time of his death in May, but will be best remembered as an individual activist, always sharp and on message. He was brave, he was courageous, forward-thinking, acerbic, stroppy, resourceful, self-confident, arrogant, charming, when he wanted to be, and a good friend. The New South Wales Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby reflected on the anniversary, looking back at how far the state and country have come on issues affecting LGBTI people. This must be a great moment to pause and, and look back and reflect on what's, what's happened. Yeah, sometimes in this job it feels like progress is slow. And for example, the provocation reforms which just went through took 20 years of advocacy. But if you look back where we were 30 years ago, in, in the space of a generation, we've gone from criminals to, at least for gay and lesbian people, being on the verge of legislative equality. So there's been a tremendous amount of progress. But looking forward, there are a lot of things we need to achieve still. Justin Coonan drew attention to the societal changes that have taken place in the past three decades and suggested the fact we could celebrate this anniversary was a marker of just how far LGBTI rights have progressed. What are the things that are a particular focus for the New South Wales Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby? I think we still have the situation where religious organisations are exempt from anti-discrimination law in most cases, meaning that people accessing their services in hospitals, in domestic violence centres, in homelessness shelters uh, can be discriminated against legally. That's really important. Obviously marriage equality is a, a key issue for our community. Uh, and then I think it's about changing people's hearts and minds, translating legislative equality into substantive equality. The event had out politicians including Sydney MP Alex Greenwich and Shadow Transport Minister Penny Sharp joining veterans of the gay rights struggle to remember the efforts of many in the very building in which the law was changed. 30 years ago this month, just an incredible law reform that was a long time coming. Premier Neville Rann was the, um, moved it as a private member's bill and we were able to get it through. It wasn't the first attempt, there'd been four attempts previously, but what we really learnt today at the forum was just how many people really made that a reality. Very courageous individuals who stood up and signed a stat deck and said, I have committed sodomy, arrest me. Um, really, really important. And what it really showed is that the way that we get gay and lesbian law reform is actually through community, through individuals, and finally when it gets to the parliament, having people prepared to stand up. But all along, it's actually about the willingness to demand equality, to never take no for an answer, and just never, ever, ever give up when you lose the first time. Pride History's Robert French, a close friend of Lex Watson, was a co-convener of the gay rights lobby during the New South Wales homosexual law reform campaign. Years of campaigning were marked by milestones, like the first Mardi Gras protest march in 1978 and the police raid on Club 80 in 1983. This was the catalyst in the fight for equality to really take off, a fight that continues. Somebody asked me the other day how I felt at the time and I said, quite honestly, 
we were so much involved in the process, you know, so many meetings, so many demonstrations, what are we going to do this, how do we write this letter, we were involved in the process, we didn't actually quite think about the long term and how we were doing it. But I've got to say, after the legislation was passed, I personally felt an enormous sense of achievement. I think today showed actually that the GLBTI community in Australia is actually one of the best at mobilising. If you look at the reforms that we've got in the last 30 years, in New South Wales same-sex couples are treated equally before the law in all areas of the law. I just didn't think that it would take 30 years for us still to be actually um, fighting about this and now going about marriage equality. What do you think is key to get that final push to get marriage equality over the line? It's just constant pressure. You've got to actually make the case in the public so that parliamentarians who often are actually behind their own constituents on a lot of issues, you've got to actually get those parliamentarians to realise that in fact they are behind the game, that people actually see there is a problem and that they want it fixed. It is important that we remember where we have come from and acknowledge the fact that our freedom to love and the rights we enjoy now were won through the courage of many people who put their own freedom at risk. Thank you to all the activists and politicians who have helped us to be visible and a more accepted part of society. Says Busby for Inside Out TV and Gay News Network.